is unbelievable. You can't do this stuff. football great traditions of pride of the Southland marching band as they open up the tee because it's football time in Tennessee. The hometown volunteers. Rebels. It's the Home Depot, SEC on CBS, Ole Miss and Tennessee. Craig Bowlerjack along with Steve Burline. So glad you're with us on CBS. Neyland Stadium sold out. Ole Miss, Tennessee has been an up and down season. Both hope to find their way into postseason play. Let's talk about the Volunteers, a very young team, Steve, and they've given the football to a freshman quarterback. That's exactly right, Craig. This is a very young Tennessee team. 16 true freshmen have started. Only two teams in the country have started more true freshmen, but the one everybody's talking about is Tyler Bray right there. Followed up a great effort with two touchdowns against South Carolina with five touchdowns and over 300 yards passing in the first half last week against Memphis. He's very excited to have this opportunity, and I'm even more excited about the two wide receivers he's got on the outside. Seniors, Denarius Moore, Gerald Jones, these guys are big-time playmakers, and both realize that they have a chance, if they finish this year outright, to really set the tempo for the future of this Tennessee football program. Ole Miss has put their trust in transfer quarterback Jeremiah Masoli, dinged up a bit last week, and we understand he'll be a game-time decision. Yeah, he is a game-time decision, Craig, but I'll tell you, one thing we do know about this guy is he is a heck of a football player. This guy... 5'11", 220 powerful pounds. He can beat you with his legs. He'll run right at you, but he can also hurt you with the passing game. He threw for over 300 yards against Arkansas earlier in the season. He can beat you two different ways, but there is a big question. We're not sure if he's going to be out there at the beginning of the game. If it's not him, it's going to be six foot five sophomore Nathan Stanley, who completed three touchdown passes against Jacksonville State in week one. It's something that we're not going to know until we actually see one of them run out on the field with that first series. 102,000 fans are coming to Knoxville, all dressed down in orange and white. The weather. Mid-November, beautiful, 66 degrees, and the forecast is for sunny skies. This will be the 64th meeting between Ole Miss and Tennessee. Now, remember, the Rebels won in a runaway last year in Knoxville, but have lost six in a row here at Neyland Stadium. Ole Miss coming off a win against Lafayette, Louisiana Lafayette last week. Tennessee had their way with Memphis. The Rebels need to win two of the last three to become bowl eligible. The balls have to win out. There's a head coach, Houston Nutt, of Ole Miss in his third season. He's had two straight nine-win campaigns with Ole Miss. And the rookie head coach at Tennessee is Derek Dooley. One of Nick Saban's staff members at LSU from 2000 to 2004. And so far, a career record of 20 and 26. He was three years a head coach of Louisiana Tech. Could there be a more perfect day for football in Knoxville, Tennessee? Ole Miss won the toss, and they chose to receive. Brandy at the five-yard line. Oh, he had an opening, and then the shoot tops were taken down at the 26-yard line. So to today's Chick-fil-A lineups, and we start with the quarterback, and there he is, Oregon transfer Jeremiah Masoli has left his troubles behind. And given Ole Miss nearly 2,000 yards of total offense and 16 touchdowns on the season. He can hurt you with the arm. He can hurt you with the legs. So Masoli, who had a concussion in the first quarter last week, and that win against Louisiana Lafayette answers the call. And we start shotgun first and 10 at the 26-yard line. The motion man, Jeff Scott. Masoli rolls out, launches one up top and wide open. 
at the 47 yard line. And Ole Miss moves the change as we look now at the Ole Miss starting offensive front and it's a line still in the making right tackle Bobby Massey is the reigning SEC offensive lineman of the week he opened up some big holes for Brandon Bolden last week Bolden ran for 136 yards against Louisiana Lafayette well, Craig right there right away right out of the gate a bust by Tennessee that was Corvick neat left wide open down the sideline for a big play on first down Little option, Masoli cuts it back up inside and a couple of yards inside ball territory. Malik Jackson makes a stop at the 49-yard line. Defensively for Tennessee. Up front, Malik Jackson can play both end and tackle. Three sacks on the season, and the linebackers are good. Nick Ravaze leads the way. In the middle with 73 stops. The secondary a little bit banged up. Two freshmen will start. Gordon and Brewer, two sophomores with Jansen Jackson and Prentice Wagner. Steve Berline so far, an opening drive, impressive by Masoli and company. He'll set up and throw a dart at the 40-yard line on target to Melvin Harris. He had a career-high five receptions last week in that win against Louisiana Lafayette and pulls down another as 26th of the season. Well, that's six foot seven, 205-pound Melvin Harris right there. He is the leading receiver for the Mississippi Rebels. And I'll tell you, what a great target to have on the outside. You can just pretty much Jeremiah Masoli at five foot eleven. All he's got to do is get it up over those linebackers. He knows that big wingspan of Melvin Harris is going to bring that ball in. Shotgun again. Masoli hands off coming the other end around the end. Tennessee strings it out out of bounds. No gain on the play. Jeff Scott, the freshman from Miami, Florida, trying to turn the corner, but on well, the ball, Steve strung it out. They did. That was a good solid play by Tennessee. They they've only given up the two big pass plays really to Ole Miss so far today. But I'll tell you what, if, if Houston Nutt and his offensive staff, if they find a weakness out there, they're going to try and exploit it. They're going to, if they feel like Tennessee is overcommitting to the run, they will find a way to try and beat you in that passing game. Two wide receivers, bottom of your screen, three on top. It's an empty backfield. Masoli and the shotgun. Ole Miss putting together an opening drive. There's the pump. He can run, but he throws. It's incomplete. Boy, what a quick release by Jeremiah Masoli, 5'11", 220 pounder, and a lot of talk about his pass at Oregon, the transfer out of San Francisco. And here's the injury, Steve Berline, last week. Didn't look all that bad, but you know what? Concussions, it's one of those dings, and you have to be mighty careful nowadays. It, it was head to head now. Houston Nutt told us, you can see right there, they were checking him out, but he said by the second half of the game, he was back in, into his normal personality and thinking clearly, and they really had no serious concern this week, but happy to see him on the field today, obviously. Crowd is up and alive, play clock under 10, third down and 10. Opening drive, right across the middle, sliding grab, Logan, but it's incomplete, and it'll be fourth down, Ole Miss. Now that that ball was thrown very well with good touch from Jeremiah Masoli. Logan, I have no idea how he could miss that ball. Just lost his concentration for a minute. Had the man beat on the outside. That's Eric Gordon. He's got the inside leverage on him and just lost his focus for a second. That would have been a big play for Ole Miss, the kind of play that you have to make on that first drive in a hostile environment like this. Tyler Campbell at midfield looking for a little pooch punt inside the 10. Boots it up high. Jansen Jackson. And that one's 10 yards, five yards deep into the end zone. And so it's going to be a touchback, and Tennessee will be on offense when we come back. Bray is ready to go to work on CBS. Are you ready for your... Oh, game day in Knoxville. Tennessee, two 12-game win streaks over Ole Miss. The Rebels' last win in Knoxville, 1983. The first game back in 1902. I'll tell you what, we saw one last year, and there's Tyler Bray, the freshman quarterback everybody's so excited about here in Tennessee. But, boy, you remember that game last year? Dexter oh McCluster boy. went crazy against the Tennessee defense down at Oxford. He owned that game. Owned that game. So they're trying to get a clock malfunction. 12.40. Trying to fix that malfunction. They want to set it at 12.40. It's at 12.25. How about Bray, though? Made his first career start, Steve Birdline, last week. You know what that feels like. And I, did he deliver against Memphis with five first-half no. touchdowns, a school record? Well, I, I, there are some that would think that maybe it was 
predetermined that that would be the, the breakout game for Tyler Bray because it was Memphis and it was a game where the coaches felt he could probably get off to a good start, but he sure responded well. On the first play, that ball nearly picked off. Take it out of the sky! Oh my, Justin Hunter at the 10 5 and touchdown! Bray is living right. <laughs> that is an understatement. He is living right. 80 yards right. on the opening play. Now, Justin Hunter, that is his fourth touchdown of the year. All four of them have been over 30 yards. He's a young, true freshman again. Another guy that really has these people in ball country very excited. Tyler Bray hooking up right away with Justin Hunter. And Daniel Lincoln, who's been out five straight games with a leg injury, boots the extra point. What a start for the Vols. What a play. Bray is living right. That ball is tipped up for grabs, and Justin Hunter Thank you very much. 80 yards to Pater. Well, that was Jonathan Cornell who had the gimme interception right through his hands for a touchdown. And Tyler Bray says, hey, what's the big deal? Nothing special. They missed it. The longest pass play of the season for Tennessee. And their second touchdown of the season on their opening possession. It well, goes 80 yards. You're going to see Jonathan Cornell right there in the middle of your screen, number 51. And Tyler Bray is going to throw this ball inside to Gerald Jones right there. But I'll tell you, you cannot. Jonathan Cornell could not have played it better. But who's the recipient? Big Justin Hunter, six foot four. Those long arms extended, picked up that ball and took it to the house. What a what a great break to start the game for Tennessee. Kind of a nightmare for Houston Nutt and the old Miss Rebels. Tyler Bray. Throws his eighth touchdown of the season, and now four receptions for touchdowns by Hunter, the freshman from Virginia Beach, Virginia. You know, Craig, since the first pass that Tyler Bray threw in the South Carolina game, his first pass in the second half, it was intercepted for a touchdown. Since that point, he's 28 of 47 for 484 yards, seven touchdowns, and no interceptions. So he's thrown eight straight touchdowns. Pilardi, the left footer, gets the kick away, and it's short. Running up this Grandy, the stop and go, waiting for his blockers, and Tennessee special teams knocks him down at the 27-yard line. Make sure you check out the new CBSSports.com shop for officially licensed NCAA gear from over 500 schools and get three-day shipping on every order. Go to shop.cbssports.com. Plenty of Tennessee here, here at Neyland Stadium. Oh, it, it is a sea of orange everywhere you walk around this town. One of the great environments for college football, to say the least. Now the question, can Jeremiah Masoli and company recover? He's going to stay on the ground. There's a nice run, weaving through traffic. Enrique Davis, who last week came back from injury. 19 carries, 116 yards. Along with Bolden, Steve, those two last week ran for over 100 yards. The first time since 1999 that Deuce McAllister and Joe Gunn pulled that trick. Yes, and we, we talked to Houston Nutt. Very excited to have Enrique Davis back. He had had an injury, kept him out of a couple of games. And he's a big, strong, in-between-the-tackles type of runner. A complete, uh, you know, alternative for Brandon Bolden, who's more a speed guy on the edge as Jeremiah Masoli takes a timeout. Timeout, Ole Miss. The first time out of the half. So Masoli wants to talk to Houston Nutt. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the game. Time now for an SEC moment presented by Sonic. Let's go back to the 1998 Fiesta Bowl. Tennessee taking on Florida State for the national title. T. Martin leading the offense in an opportunistic defense. Tennessee jumping out 14-0 lead in the second quarter. In the fourth, Martin's 79-yard touchdown strike to Phyllis Price. Sealed the win. 23-16 final gave the Vols their sixth national title and the first and only national championship in the Philip Fulmer era. It was not Peyton Manning. It was T. Martin who led the way. T. Martin, no doubt. Yeah, he's a, he's a legendary figure around here as well. They love, they love their former ball quarterbacks around here. I tell you, you walk around this town, you look at the stadium, and 
That's one of the things that Derek Dooley told us. He said he could not believe how supportive the fans have been, the whole Tennessee volunteer community has been, despite the frustration of this season. They've been with him every step of the way, and he feels like he's going to be able to reward them here very soon. Now from Philip Fulmer, Lane Kiffin, a cup of coffee, and now it's Derek Dooley's team. Ole Miss down seven with the football at the 31-yard line. Masoli in the shotgun. Step. Enrique Davis. Let's go back to New York for the John Hancock update. Thank you, Tim Brando. Good to hear Timmy B from our New York studios. We'll check in with him throughout the day. Bolden breaks a tackle past the 40, and Ole Miss is knocking on the door as Jansen Jackson saves the touchdown at the 35-yard line. Steve, you could run through this hole. Well, watch this hole. Watch right here on the left side. You got Alex Washington, and you got Soul right there on the left side to do a great job creating this lane, to cave and everything down, and right there, just one-on-one. -on -one. Brandon Bolden making Eric Gordon miss. Had, a, had no one, no one between him, but it's actually Herman Lathers, number 34. Great run. Jeff Scott, as quick as they come, the freshman from Miami. Well, he can hit the edge in a hurry. Herman Lathers with the tackle. That last run, by the way, by Bolden was 29 yards off the left side. So Ole Miss now looking at second down. Let's call it seven under six minutes of play here in Knoxville opening quarter. Well, Craig, when you get a, a talented running back like Bolden one-on-one -on -one in the open field like that, the left side of that offensive line, you saw him sealed down the inside. That's a hard tackle for Herman Lathers or anybody to make one-on-one -on -one with all that field out there. Shotgun, little quick throw, far sideline, just a little bit out in front of Markeith Summers, senior. Boy, big target too at six foot three, 205 out of Olive Branch, Mississippi. A lot of big receivers on the field today. Marquise Summers had a chance to make a play right there. That's the one that Jeremiah Masoli would love to have back. Just a little bit out in front of him. He's usually extremely accurate on those quick bubble screens like that, but right there, a lost opportunity. Steve, so many people are so impressed with the quick release of Masoli, and he does get rid of it in a hurry. Third down, seven, 521 to play in the opening quarter. He went under center, Masoli. Backs out. He's got, he's got four stacked up top of your screen. He throws man coverage up top and off the hand of Melvin Harris. So you load one side, you get man coverage on the other. And you have to make that play. You're going to see at the bottom of your screen right here, Markeith. Marquise or Melvin Harris and uh, Eric Gordon one on one exactly what you want open field Jeremiah Masoli felt a little pressure got a little bit rushed that is an opportunity at a huge play Jeremiah Masoli knows it you just don't get that many opportunities you got to catch in Houston Nutt no surprise is going to go for it on fourth down and seven Rebels 10 of 16 this season on fourth they've got exactly the same play lined up and through the hands Brandy couldn't hang on. So they showed Tennessee the same set. Instead of going man covers, they go to the loaded upside, and Ole Miss will turn it over on downs. Well, that time you're right, Craig. It was the exact same situation. But this time you see right here, Tennessee rolls a safety over the top to force Jeremiah Masoli to throw the ball this way. Another bad throw by Jeremiah Masoli, though high and not on target. You had blockers. You can see the blockers out in front. That could have been a play to pick up the first down, but Jeremiah Masoli missing some early throws in this game, uncharacteristically. Just two of eight, Masoli, here in the opening quarter. Tennessee with a football, up by seven, bad snap. Gray picks it up and tries to fire, and it's complete. My, oh, my. Moore comes back to help out the freshman, and how he got that ball away, I do not know. You know, there is there, there is something about this freshman. Man. He doesn't seem to get too rattled, and, and Derek Dooley told us he may not know what the heck's going on all the time, and, and he, he does. He's a true freshman, but somehow he finds a way to make something good come out of it most of the time. He's going to make mistakes, and he does. Well, we talked to him. You've got to admit, he was laid back in about three or four word answers. That was it. Blood pressure never elevated. 
Pick up a three, second down seven. Gray wants to throw, he does. Oh, a circus catch on the hands of Moore. Still on his feet and takes a tumble inside the 30-yard line. Well, we talked about Daenerys Moore earlier, how hot he has been lately. He's, he, he's been averaging over 30 yards a catch. And, and I'll tell you, to, to focus and bring that ball in, it was a little bit behind him right there. Tyler Bray a little bit off with that throw, but Daenerys Moore did not panic, kept his poise, made the catch, and he's just an extremely confident wide receiver out there right now. Reminds me of the tip drill. That, that, you got to focus. You got to keep your focus. About three plays now, over 20 yards in this opening quarter. Bray wants more. Hands up in the pocket, goes up top. Flags are down and overthrows his intended receiver. That was Derrick Rogers on the outside. Another true freshman, big receiver on the outside. Might have been some kind of illegal contact out there. Uh, Derrick Rogers uh, has some space. And now we'll see Matt Austin huddling, and we'll get the call. Holding. Defense number 20. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. That's the strong safety, Johnny Brown. Yep, Johnny Brown trying to grab on and hold on for dear life. The Rick Rogers was wide open for a touchdown right there. That's one that uh, Tyler Bray would love to have back as well. Boy, we've seen some receivers open today, some chances at big plays, both of these teams have been going after each other up the field. First and ten under four minutes to play as we look at the Verizon red zone. Tennessee knocking on the door again. Up top with a push. Touchdown! Denarius Moore reaches up and catches that ball over Tony Grimes. Well, you mentioned the red zone, Craig, and that's an area that Tyrone Nix has been extremely frustrated this year. They've been hideous in the red zone, Ole Miss on defense. 75% of the time when teams are down there, they're scoring touchdowns. Right there, another great example. You know, you're, you had Grimes in great position, just didn't make the play. Well, 28 opportunities in the red zone. Now 21 touchdowns allowed by the Ole Miss defense. And the kick by Lincoln is up and good. Denarius Moore grabs his seventh touchdown of the season, his 16th career at Tennessee. There are not any more on fire wide receivers in the country than Denarius Moore. This guy is unstoppable right now, playing with incredible confidence. Well, the young quarterback, Kingsburg, California, having his way early. Senior coming out this year has made a statement. You know, Gerald Jones. His counterpart on the other side, another senior, that was missed a lot of missed a few games earlier in the season due to the hand injury that he had. He's back now, but Denarius Moore has just stepped up his play, his level of play with the opportunities presented to him lately. And he is catching a lot of people's attention, I guarantee you. That the numbers that he's putting up and the, the yards that he's making on every one of these plays is staggering. Uh, last week, five touchdowns against Memphis in the opening half, already with two here in the opening quarter. That ball takes a bounce out at the four-yard line. Well, Bray, Bray, Steve, six of eight, 165 yards and two touchdowns. Here's Matt Austin. Free kick out of bounds on the kicking team. Ball will be placed at the 40-yard line. First down. Time now for our Home Depot tools for success. Uh, been a pr pretty simple game plan or floor plan, whatever you want to call it, with your tools for success. Tyler Gray right there, a great catch by Daenerys Moore. Big play after the catch, yards after the catch, and then right here just going up over the top for the touchdown. Yeah. A great individual effort by two players right there. Tony Grimes taking advantage of. H.R. Greer, the fullback. And this stays on the ground, and they pound the ball. Enrique Davis picks up two the hard way to the 42-yard line. Mazzoli, 2-2 two two to start this game, Steve, but he's gone 0 for 6 and a lot of drop balls. Well, there's been a few drop balls, but I, I, I don't think that that's been the problem. That was, that was obviously some drop passes, but I think he's been a little bit off with his accuracy, making routine catches very difficult for his wide receivers. And the, one, the one catch was the, the drop 
on the inside route when we had one on one coverage on the outside, but the other one he's been missed throws. Play action as Masoli rolls. He can run, directing traffic, and then steps out of bounds at the 45. So Masoli, he had that concussion early last week in the first quarter. There was con con some concerns whether or not he would play today, and he's answered the bell here early. The transfer from Oregon. And I, I think he's going to the right guys, Craig. It looks like his decision making is not effective whatsoever, but his rhythm and his accuracy is just not there today. You know, he's had a, some issues in the past three months, juvenile facility back in 05 for robbery, March of this year, theft at an Oregon fraternity, and then Chip Kelly released him with when they found marijuana in his car. And now he's trying to find a second chance. He's picked off. Gordon, daylight, one man to meet, 10, five, touchdown, Tennessee! be all we see at Jeremiah Masoli not only was that a late poor decision outside Eric Gordon took advantage of it but he also took a shot after he was trying to pursue and make the tackle boy he got clean Gordon a freshman with his second interception of the season and runs it back 46 yards for a touchdown and all of a sudden a runaway start for Tennessee up 21 nothing and there you see Masoli getting rocked on the outside. I tell you, Houston Nutt might have a decision to make whether Masoli can go any further. Watch the shot here at the bottom. That hurts if you're a Mississippi Rebel fan. Back in Knoxville, Beeland Stadium, a 21-0 start by the Volunteers. Houston Nutt, well, he's been in these type of games before. But looks like Mazzoli is ready to, ready to come back in. Maybe maybe that, that hit there after the interception might wake him up a little bit because uh, he's had some opportunities. Lardy with the kick. A little bit short. Amos bundles up and finally Grandy takes it. Past the 25. They'll mark him at the 27 yard line. Some little extracurricular hits. Why not? It's Ole Miss in Tennessee. And let's see how Mazzoli, how uh, he reacts, Steve Berline. You've been in that position before. You throw a pick for six. Now you've got a what? Short memory. You find out a lot about a person in these situations. You really do. The ability to, to shake off what has happened. They're, they're in a 21 0 hole, but. It's still early in the ball game. It's still the first quarter. What you've got to do if you're Jeremiah Masoli in this situation, you've got to convince your teammates that it's okay. Let's take this one play at a time, go down and score. We'll get our confidence back and everything's going to be okay. Two wide receivers set on first down to the 27 yard line. They fake the end round. They give it to Bolden, big hole. And Bolden drags a volunteer past the 41. And you look at the first four possessions by the Rebels. Six plays and punt. Three and out. Six plays and they lose it on downs as Houston Nutt went for it on fourth. And then that interception you saw it a moment ago. 46 yards returned by Gordon. And in those 18 plays that they've run, there have been about five or six chances to make plays. That's a pretty good percentage if you're an offensive coach. Gordon trying to find the edge. Picks up a block and throws his shoulder pads across. The 45, the 46 yard line, under two minutes of play. Eric Gordon and company make the tackle for Tennessee. Boy, what a first quarter for Gordon. He's in on tackles. This kid's just a freshman, and a true freshman out of Nashville. Second down four, right up the gut. And that's Enrique Davis to midfield. Well, on this drive, we've seen Brandon Bolden two times off the left side, bouncing plays outside. I feel like. Houston Nutt and Mark, Mike Markison, the offensive coordinator for Ole Miss, have found something over there. And then right there, you bring your big power back. Enrique Davis up there between the tackles. He's got a little rhythm going in the running game. Huge third and short here for them right now. Need to get to the 49 yard line of Tennessee from the eye formation. Masoli, little option. Decides to run it, turns it upfield, shuts a tackle, still on his feet, and pushes the pile to the 35 yard line. 
Oh, there's the legs that we talked about, the dangerous legs of Jeremiah Masoli. I'll tell you, he's only 5'11", but he is a solid 220 pounds. He's got probably 195 of that 220 below the waist. He's got some thick, stocky legs. He runs through people. Tennessee knows that. He's not going to slide. He's going to lower the shoulder and go. That was a good, strong run by Jeremiah Masoli. On the season, came in with 446 yards on the ground, nearly five yards of carry. He picks up a chunk, three wide receiver set. It's like a busted play. Finally, Davis finds his way upfield to the 25. I'll take eight, wouldn't you, on a busted play? Masoli couldn't get that ball into the, the belly of Davis. Well, no doubt, that was that was uh, almost a broken play. Masoli did a great job just getting rid of the football. But Enrique Davis, Somehow came up with it, made a nice run out of it as we come to the end of the first quarter, last 15 seconds here. May have time to get one more playoff for Ole Miss. It's second down and two. High formation. Masoli takes a snap. Davis right side and pushes for a first down to the 17-yard line. Corey Miller, Reves in on the stop for the Vols, and that ends the first quarter. And what a quarter for Tennessee. The Volunteers up 21. We'll return to Knoxville after this message and a word from your local station. opening quarter for Tennessee. They lead Ole Miss 21-0. Craig Bulberjack, Steve Berline, glad you're with us on CBS. SEC action here in Knoxville. Boy, the first quarter is all volunteers, but I think you think Ole Miss maybe found something with their ground game. Well, Jeremiah Masoli's been struggling, no doubt about it, throwing the football. This last drive, they have not thrown the football one time. They're moving the ball right down the field against this Tennessee defense. I think they're getting some confidence, getting some rhythm. Houston not realizes if we're going to move the ball right now, we got to go right at them. That's the way to do it, and they're doing very well so far. And that last shot by Masoli, you thought maybe that would uh, clear the cobwebs? Maybe it has. I think that shot that he took on the interception might have woke him up a little bit, but also the good, strong run he made on that option play, the big, the big run for a first down, also shows that he's more into it right now. So we start the second down or the second quarter with a first down inside the 20-yard line. With a skip and a hop up the middle. It's a breakaway. Bolden! Touchdown, Ole Miss! Uh, I think a great, great philosophy change by Ole Miss right there. Whoever it was, Houston Nutt, Mark Markison, Dave Rader, the co-offensive coordinator, they said, you know what? Let's see if they can stop us coming right at them. They didn't even come close. There was not one negative play on that drive for Ole Miss. All good, positive, hard runs. Score on the first play of the second quarter, and all of a sudden, that 21 0 lead melts away. Bryson Rose set to try the point after. Good snap, hold is down, kicks away, and Rose splits the uprights. And behind the running of Brandon Bolden, Ole Miss on the, on the board, opening play of the second quarter here in Knoxville. Uh, nothing tricky about it right up the gut and a lot of a few missed tackles but Bolden boy he can he knows how to smell that end zone his 10th of the season Brandon Bolden Ole Miss down 14. All on the ground at 72 yards 239 off the clock and Bolden is looking pretty bold I mean he goes 17 yards and it's a 14 point ball game here in Knoxville. Well, you look, you look at that bench right now, it's a whole different attitude. They needed something good to happen. They needed to finish off a drive. Everybody on that team knows now. Second quarter just started. We got our rhythm going. Let's make a big stop defensively and see if we can get control, get some momentum going offensively for ourselves. Andrew Ritter has a teed up for Ole Miss. Drive. Ritter gives it a ride down to about the six yard line. Rogers. Reverse. Reverse. 
Jansen Jackson at the 40, 45, 50. Jackson out of bounds. Trickery by Derek Dooley. Tennessee at the 38-yard line to start their first drive of the second quarter. Well, you're going to see the Rick Rogers makes the catch, and then right here, that's Jansen Jackson coming in. A very well set up play. They must have known that Ole Miss was going to look at this over here. But they must have known that when Tennessee or when Ole Miss tries to kick the ball, they got a, t a, a cue that they were going to kick to the left side of the field. They must have seen something during the week where they were, had that soft spot on the back side. Brilliantly executed kickoff return. 55 yards, first and 10. Tennessee with a 21 to 7 lead, and Bray throws a little low. The Gerald Jones incomplete. Jones, a great story. He's a senior. He's watched uh, coaches come and go here at Tennessee. He was out three games early with Oregon, Florida, and UAB. Broke his left hand. We had a great chat with him on Thursday. You know, he looked at his hand. He goes, listen, I've, I've got a plate, and I've also got six screws. It's tough to catch, but it's time to play football. And, and amazing that he can come back. You saw this big scar on the top of his hand that he has the strength throughout the rest of his hand to still go out there and squeeze that football. He's a... He's a tough kid. That metal plate, six screws. I don't know if I can come back from that. Bray in the pocket of the throws. And I see a flag. Yeah, flag's back around the 44-yard line. And holding's a call. And Tennessee's going the other way. Now, this is something where Tyler Bray, as a young quarterback, Derek Dooley knows it. Offense 71, 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. But Tyler Bray, we, we, we spoke about a little bit earlier, he's not a real vocal guy, but this is a situation where he's got to kind of start maturing a little bit, take control in the huddle and say, guys, yeah, things are pretty good right now, but we cannot let up. We got to focus. We can't have these penalties setting us back. Second 20 is not acceptable. First minute of the second quarter, second down 20 at the 49-yard line of Ole Miss. Bray shotgun. Pressure, and he cannot escape back at the 42. And let's go back for a college football update. Here's Tim Brando. Now the Badgers rank number seven. They've got the lead. Maybe running away at this point, 24-10. Yeah, good football team. And this is a situation here, Craig. If I'm Tennessee, I take a shot. It's third in the world, but if it's incomplete, you punt it, you pin him back inside the 20 anyway. If you catch it, or if it's an interception, they're still going to get the ball deep in their own territory either way. Ray waiting, strikes it over the top, and overthrows his wide receiver, Gerald Jones. So that will bring up fourth down, and... Off target, Bray, the most inconsistent drive so far here in the first half. Well, not his fault. Third and third in the world is hard to do, but you know what scared him was right there, right here. The cornerback falling inside is what kept Tyler Bray from leading Gerald Jones to the sideline. He, he probably was hoping Gerald Jones would set down in that hole. Cunningham with the kick. Randy will take it, 17 yards. Great coverage, special teams by Tennessee. Rodgers with the tackle. The Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. Freshman, a true freshman, a sophomore, making plays for the Tennessee Volunteers. This is a team that has a lot of very young, talented players. They've been going through taking their lumps this year, but the future, I think, is very bright for these guys. You know, the offensive line today for Tennessee, three freshmen start with Schofield, Stone, and James. You have to learn sometime. Yeah. It's tough to do it in the SEC. Not much. Not much. Well, the challenge for Tennessee now, because Ole Miss had some success running right out, and the challenge is whether they can make the adjustment, whether they're strong enough in their front seven to be able to match up with a physical running game that Ole Miss seems to think 
they can they can apply the pressure with right now. And they're taking on some pretty good defensive tackles in Malik Jackson and Victor Thomas. Yeah, but Malik Jackson is a great ball player, playing the best of their interior lineman, but he's truly a defensive end by nature. A little bit light, and there's a great play. Came right off the edge, and Jeff Scott takes a pop. Back at the 10-yard line, there's a flag at the 9. That might be a face mask. Or a horse collar. The stop marker on the Personal play. foul, face mask, defense. 15-yard penalty to previous spot, automatic first down. Well, that's LaMarcus Thompson that had the chance to make the play. Boy, what a great play. Reddick cleanly came up the field, just got that right hand underneath on the face mask, it looked like. I, yeah, right there on the side. Not, not a violent bad one, but you know what? A great play just, just wiped away right there. The senior LaMarcus Thompson's got to know a little bit better than that. He was in great position to make the play. Can't give him a gift, 15 yards. Yeah, he's the most vocal defensive player for Tennessee. Shotgun, Masoli. Hand off, Bolden breaks the tackle. Boy, cartwheels it at the 40-yard line. What a pop. You know, Bolden is such a tough player. And we got a Tennessee ball down. That's Eric Gordon. Eric Gordon. He got caught up, Stephen, in what was a collision. Oh, yeah, I think he caught Brandon Bolden's knee. He, he came in low to make the tackle on big Brandon Bolden, and you'll see, takes that knee right to the head. Boom, right there. Uh, you know, cornerbacks, a lot of times, they're, they're asked to come up and make these tackles, take on linemen. One of the things they're told, generally speaking, is to, to go hit low. Don't try and take one of those big guys on high because they're take so the strong legs and down. powerful. Yeah, problem is, if you do catch that knee, it's like it's like hitting a helmet. You know all the attention given to head-to-head -head shots. And good to see Eric Gordon up on his feet. Well, he's a little Boy, wobbly. He is wobbly, yeah. no doubt about it. He is wobbling a bit out yeah. of Nashville. He's trying to shake it out, but Steve, you've had uh, that concussion test on the sideline. They put the finger, and you kind of go this way and that, and then they ask you who you're, who are you, and what day is it? Well, back when I was playing, as long as you were close with your answers, you were back out on the field. <laughs> now, now they're a little bit more uh, concerned about it. And, Maybe that explains why uh, some of my friends might tell you I have a few issues myself. <laughs> Two tackles for Gordon. He had that pick six in the first quarter. Good to see him doing all right, but boy, he's he's not sure where he's at right now. So Teague, Marshall Teague comes in for Gordon at the left corner spot. And the second down three from Masoli. He goes under center. Hand off. Pads are popping. Enrique Davis nowhere to run. Bolden dished out a big hit, and Enrique just took one. Well, this is good physical defensive football by Tennessee. You're going to see just penetration across the board right there. You had three guys in the backfield off the snap. They got the snap kind of snap to the left side. They all slanted left. Caught Ole Miss off guard. How about uh, Ole Miss rushing? Now, you said they found something with their ground game, and they've held true to form here in the second quarter. Third down and four. And a whistle before the snap. Timeout, Tennessee. The first time out of the half. Tennessee calls a timeout before Masoli got the snap away. 11.31 to play as Houston Nutt trying to get something rolling here. They've scored on the first play of this quarter to make it a 14-point ball game. They're looking at third and four. Big third and four right here. Ole Miss needs to... Keep that rhythm they've got going here. Well, they keep it on the ground. Masoli steps back, runs, got room, spins out of a tackle. He's going to be close. And Steve, from our vantage point, looks to be at least a yard shy as Brent Brewer, the strong safety, and another freshman for Tennessee, came up to make the stop. Well, this is a true quarterback draw. I think Jeremiah Masoli makes a bad decision right here. I think he could have planted on his left foot and ripped forward for another couple years. Right up there, if he takes it up inside on that run, he's going to pick up another couple yards. He tries to bounce it outside and make the big play, and now Ole Miss has to punt. I think that was a bad decision by Jeremiah Masoli. you got to know exactly where that first down marker is. 
Came up a yard shy, and Tyler Campbell back on the field. It's run away. High snap. Gathers it down and launches a big hit. Jansen Jackson lets this one fall. Inside the 10-yard line, takes a kick back. A Tennessee bounce to the 13-yard line. And let's go above the line with Steve Berline. Uh, there's so much to talk about in college football right now. What would you do? What if you were TCU? I, I tell you, I feel for him. It's going to be tough to crack in. I guarantee I believe in the plus one system. Now, how about props for Joe Pa winning game number 400 today, the big game against Ohio State, and then the big story in college football right now, Cam Newton. What do you think about that? Well, personally, I think innocent until proven guilty. All we have are allegations out there right now. If I'm Auburn, I play Cam Newton. You got a chance, a once in a lifetime chance to go out there and try and earn another national championship. I think Cam Newton's got to play tonight because even if even if they do come back to find that the allegations are true, they're going to forfeit the whole season anyway. And of course, what comes up after this game is Georgia Auburn here on CBS Doubleheader Day. Dallas football bad snap and rolls to Bray and just reached up and said, hey, tar and pool, get me out of trouble. Well, that, that was fortunate again. You know, it just seems as though Tennessee has had a lot of breaks go their way. That football is not a round ball. You don't know where that thing's going to bounce a lot of times. It's been bouncing to the orange people today so far. But I'll tell you, if you keep testing it, you keep testing luck, eventually it's going to come back and haunt you. Well, as we expected, we just heard that Gordon took one on the helmet, and his return is questionable. Nine young player from Tennessee on the rollout comes away. Tough throw in traffic. And it's incomplete at the 31-yard line. Now, you look at a very sharp Tyler Bray in the first quarter. He's had a rocky second so far. Well, you know, that, that was a shot right there. I think it was Jonathan Cornell that came up the field that laid him out right in the rib. Exposed ribs. That hurts. Tyler Bray knows it. But right there, again, fortunate that Marcus Temple did not turn around to see that football. That could have been picked off. Dangerous throw out of your own end zone. Look at Bray's numbers today. 6 of 11, 165 yards, and a pair of touchdowns. Bray is 0 for 3 in this quarter, passing after that fine first quarter. Over showing blitz. They back off on third down and 13. Bray again under heavy pressure. Ball is taken at the 31. Move the chains. And how about Rivera, the tight end, came back to help his young quarterback. And first down, Tennessee. Craig, I'll tell you what, if, if Tyler Bray keeps making decisions like that, he throws this ball up for grabs out of his own end zone under pressure. You know, that, that's a risky, risky throw. Very fortunate that Michael Rivera came down with that football. This easily could have been intercepted again. You know, not, not a chance to really step and deliver the ball as he wanted to under tremendous pressure right up the gut. But living a charmed life right now. Alan Walker wraps him up after a pickup of 26. And it's first and 10 balls at their own 36-yard line. Coming on the edge, Rodgers breaks the tackle, push past the 50. And right now, Tennessee catching fire at the 47 of Ole Miss. Lorenz in on the stop, Marcus Temple. Take your pick. That's a big man to Rick Rogers. I'll tell you, he, he is a big, true freshman wide receiver. You get him on the move to the outside, he's on the edge before you know it, and you get those shoulders squared up to the field. It's tough. Look at, look at Denarius Moore on the outside with the block on. Jeremy McGee just helping out. Not a, not a, not a dominating block, but enough to, to buy some extra room for Rick Rogers. Under nine minutes to play. Another first down, Tennessee. Boy, nearly running out of that tackle was Poole. Johnny Brown hung on to strong safety. He had five tackles last week in that win against Louisiana Lafayette. He's a senior out of Charleston, Mississippi. One of the team captains for Ole Miss on the defensive side of the football. Ole Miss has to step up. They, they've been given some chances by Tyler Bray in this drive to make some plays deep in, their, deep in Tennessee territory. They let him out of the hole. Now they've got to firm up and, and make sure that they don't let Tennessee get into scoring territory. Justin Hunter, top of the screen. Gray slingshot. Oh, oh, oh. There's a flag. Hunter. And it was Marcus Temple. Also, Johnny Brown was around Hunter. That was a sidearm slinger. 
And here's Matt Austin with the call. Pass interference. Defense number four. Ball will be placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Now, yeah, Wednesday on CBS, Survivor surf down the face of a volcano and hang on for a do-or-die challenge. It's a new Survivor Wednesday only on CBS. I know, Steve Vermont, you always like to surf volcanoes <laughs> in your off-season, right? It, it, it is one of my true passions. <laughs> oh, I, I, do I, it on, I, I do it on Xbox. That's why I do it. <laughs> Another gift from Ole Miss or Ole Miss. Or the, 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 they don't have a lot of, they're the third fewest penalized team in this SEC, but a lot of big ones today. Play action pass, Bray. One pump. And overthrows incomplete. Gerald Jones, the intended receiver. A little pressure on this freshman quarterback makes a big difference. It, it really does. And this, as you stated earlier, Craig, three freshmen starting on this offensive line for Tennessee. It's been a huge problem all year. Matt Sims has done a tremendous job, I think, until Tyler Bray has taken over, taking shots, standing in the pocket, making plays. I've got a lot of respect for him as a quarterback. I think Matt Sims is a, a guy that can play college football, no doubt about it. Tyler Bray's getting his opportunity right now. Bray looks one way, throws the other. Gerald Jones has some room, bumped out of bounds after a pickup of two at the 35, come up the 34-yard line. Gerald Jones Ooh. looks like he might be uh, yeah. shaken up a little bit. You know, that was the left hand that he hurt, but he's holding the right shoulder. Yeah, he's he's kind of hanging that arm like something happened to his shoulder, yeah. Jones, a senior from Oklahoma City. Last week, five receptions for 66 yards and a touchdown. Battling injuries all his senior campaign. Here's a matchup right here. Bump up on top of that's Daenerys Moore on the outside. No safety. Four wide receiver set. Bray, hot slant, right on the button. First down, move the change, Justin Hunter. You can't miss him at 6'4". Yep. Justin, Justin Hunter, one-on-one on, one on the outside. That was the matchup. Good decision by Tyler Bray. I thought it was Denarius Moore out there, but Justin Hunter and Tyler Bray, no indecision, makes a quick call out there. and Good, strong throw. Tony Grimes, again, giving up a play. He's the Frenchman from Hollywood, Florida. Three rushes, five passing on 63 yards on this drive, nearing four minutes in Tennessee at the 22-yard line of Ole Miss, up by 14. Gray shotgun. Boy, that, you know, this kid is a gunslinger, and he throws in a double coverage to the tight end, Stocker. Well, he tried to stick it in there. It was a simple stick route by his big tight end, Luke Stocker, also coming off a concussion. Big part of this offense, normally speaking. And right there, Tyler Bray trying to force one into him. And again, got away with it. We saw Gerald Jones back on the field. Maybe a stinger. They need his senior leadership. Second down, 10. And the play clock running. The six to five. The snap is away. Flags are down. One pump across the middle. Oh, that was a touchdown. Yeah. That was a touchdown. He led Stocker a little bit too far. Stocker Bray would love to play. have that throwback, but a flag is at the 25. Busy half by this officiating crew. Matt Austin, the referee. Ole Miss saying it's against Tennessee. Illegal formation, five men in the backfield. Number 70 was not on the line of scrimmage. That penalty's declined. Third down. Well, Wednesday on CBS, winning this case will take a lot of patience, a little luck, and a touch of magic. Penn Jillette, a Penn and Teller guest stars on The Defenders. That's Wednesday, and you'll see it only here on CBS. Craig, we talked about some of the missed opportunities that Ole Miss has had right there. Tyler Bray had Luke Stalker running for a touchdown down the middle of the field. You need to cash in when you get those chances. Here comes the pressure. Yeah, Ole Miss bringing the linebacking forward. They've got coverage up top. Oh, did he go on the top of the run of the ladder? Justin Hunter in double coverage. He's a high jumper by trade. And did he get up and over he's, Ole Miss's defense? He's a world-class high jumper. Jumped 7-2 before 
And I'll tell you, that's confidence from Tyler Bray from one freshman to another. You got to respect Tyler Bray. He is not afraid to put it up and give his players a chance to go up and make a play on that football. Justin Hunter showed he can do it. Daniel Lincoln. Back playing football after missing the last five weeks with a leg injury, boots the extra point, and Tennessee opens up a 28 to 7 lead. Well, Hunter, six foot four and a high jumper. That's a tough combo for a couple of shorter defensive backs. 27 yards. 28 7, Tennessee. Here in Knoxville, Tennessee, 28, Ole Miss, 7. 11 plays, 86 yards, just four minutes off the clock, and a terrific jump and a catch by Justin Hunter. How about his uh, numbers today? Steve, career high, 114 yards rece receiving. And he had the 80-yard catch in that opening quarter of play. And we're still in the first half, still six and a half minutes in the first half. Now this kid, I like, you look at him on film, and he's, he's, he's a long strider as a tall guy for sure, but... He has incredible time in going up for that football. I, I really think he's got a bright future in front of him. Tennessee converted on three of third downs, three of three on third downs on that drive. Pilardi the kick. It's taken at the five-yard line by Jeff Scott. Scott up the gut and swings his way to the 28-yard line. And if we look at the SEC and how things are uh, shaping up in the SEC East, you know what, too close to call, Florida, South Carolina, followed by Georgia, Kentucky, Vandy, Tennessee. Now, Tennessee looking for their first conference win. And they have to win out, though, to become bowl eligible. And that, that's a huge win priority. Out. Huge priority of Derek Dooley. He felt like his team had to win at least one game during their tough stretch. They lost the three A games to Alabama, Arkansas, and Auburn. But they had to win one game in that stretch of, of losses that they did not do. And now they're, they got their backs up against the wall. They got to win out. Masoli going to work. Steps back, throws in the flat. Not much. Maybe a yard up to around the 30 yard line. E.J. Epperson with his second catch, the fullback for Ole Miss. What's left, by the way, for Tennessee? I want to remind people that Derek Dooley, after this game, they've got a game at Vandy. And they finish up against Kentucky. So, yes, you have to win out. Six games makes you bowl eligible. Six wins makes you bowl eligible. And there you see Coach Dooley on the sidelines. He uh, brought in a coordinator, Justin Wilcox, from Boise State, where they've had a little bit of success. And one of the other key points oh, yes. today is that while he was at Boise State, they played Oregon twice with Jer Jeremiah Masoli at quarterback and won both times. And right there, we see another throw by Jeremiah Masoli. Again, not very accurate, which we're, we're, we're not accustomed to seeing that. Yeah, uh, Corbett Neeks. And there's Justin Wilcox up there in the booth, right there in the middle. It's Looking three. on intently. Got to be happy with how his defense has performed to this point. But as we stated, he did face Mazzoli twice yes, yes. while at Boise State, and Mazzoli was the starting quarterback at Oregon. They won both of those games. Now, Boise State 49 and 4 over the duration of Wilcox's tenure there, but. Timeout. Timeout, the, Ole Miss. Their second timeout. They, the just, they just got the timeout called. It was running up on one second on the play clock. Breaking down the quarterbacks, Masoli struggled 3 of 11 passing, 37 yards in the pick. Also, Bray. A little shaken early in the second quarter, but Steve solid. I mean, solid first half. 229 yards, three touchdowns. Remember last week, this young man threw five touchdowns, a school record in the first half in that win against Memphis. Well, if you're Derek Dooley, you've got to feel really good about the development of Tyler Gray, no doubt about it. Now, he is living charm. He's made some great throws. He's gotten away with a few, but. He may be one of those guys that can just do it, has a great sense for it. Third down and seven, Masoli trying to get something going for Ole Miss. Goes up top, nearly intercepted. Inside the 45-yard line, it was Teague in on the breakup. Now, Markeith Summers did a super job keeping this ball from being intercepted. Really, an underthrown, poorly thrown ball again by Jeremiah Masoli. And once again, you you don't see a lot of that when you look at the film of it. He's usually fairly accurate, but today just not, not getting that ball where he needs to get it. Right there, Marquis Summers prevented another interception. 
Tyler Campbell will punt inside his own 20 yard line. Jansen Jackson is set to receive back inside the 25 yard line. Oh, beauty. High hanger. That ball is off. Oh, fumble! Ole Miss, can they control? Brandon Bolden had a chance at that football, but it is not going to be Ole Miss's football because even if Bolden recovered it, his feet had already hit out of bounds. He could not come back in and recover that ball. Well, he had an incredible opportunity. He tried to pick it up and run. All he needed to do was fall on that football. They got the ball to the 10-yard line. And what's the rule of thumb? Get on the football. Get on it. Are you kidding me? Watch this. If he just falls on that football right there, he kicks it now. Look, his knee's out oh, of yeah. bounds. Oh, yeah, no question. And, and he gets it, but he's out of bounds. Uh, and uh, this is another example of the ball bouncing right for Tennessee. But Bolden, he's got to get on that football. No doubt about it. There's no hesitation. That ball is Tennessee's all the way. That was a 58-yard punt. Now, and those are the kind of plays that win and lose ball games, Craig. You know that. First and 10, six-yard line. And the balls take over with a 21-point lead. Wow. The pop of the day, Lawan Scott, number 96, bringing the heat. Big Lawan at 310. Listen in. Hello. Uh, you know, this Tennessee offensive line coming into the season, only three combined career starts for this whole offensive line. And one person, Jared Shaw, number 74, had all three of those starts. He's now playing the right guard. He's the one that busted on that last play, the senior. Busted for a big hit. A loss of three. Tennessee backed up. Gray is on end zone. Slingshots at the stop of the tight end. And the big fella jumps past the 10 over Cameron Wiggum, a freshman for Ole Miss. I tell you, we've seen some, we see some wild plays in this first half. We have. Some high flying, some high jumping. Yeah, Luke, Luke Stalker right there, jumping rope over the top and uh, showing his athletic ability. That, that's a huge, you know, eight yards right there, seven, eight yards that he picked up because it gets Tyler Bray out of his end zone. There's a difference between <laughs> dropping back to the, to the four or five yard line or dropping back into those checkerboards back there behind him. You get a stop here, Ole Miss, and you've got a chance for good field possession in the final couple of minutes of the half. Bray, all day to throw, flush down the pocket, leads his way out, one puppy's gonna run, and a hook slide at the 16 yard line, just enough. Well, you know what? I thought he got, he's not getting the spot. I he, thought he, he went past the 15. They're gonna mark him at right at the 15 yard line. But he slid. Feet first, that ball, the ball never crossed the 15 yard line. I don't think if he would have gone forward, there's no doubt he would have made the first down, but yard shy. Yard shy. Get a chance to look at the slide here. You'll see. Here he comes. Feet first. Where's that ball when he hit? That ball's right on the 15 yard line. So even though four and a half feet of his six and a half feet were across that line, the ball wasn't. Cunningham. Will punt away. Randy, 40 yard line. Ole Miss trying to get some field position before halftime, and he's taken down in a wave at the 41. Coming up on the Geico halftime report, a preview of the second game of our doubleheader Georgia and second ranked Auburn plus Tim. And Spencer will be joined by Tony Barnhart from Auburn to discuss the latest in the Cam Newton situation. Stay tuned for that. Interesting talk. That's all coming up on the Geico halftime report. From the 41. Blue skies in Knoxville. You can see the orange and white. What a what a beautiful afternoon. Greg, you mentioned before that how it was important for Ole Miss to stop him. Well, great punt coverage by Tennessee right there. Ole Miss, the number one punt return team in the SEC, has not had a chance to break Randy Luce yet today. Masoli hands it off. Still on, the, on his seat. Breaking a tackle, Scott. What oh, a speedster. He's only 5'8". Now, he's kind of a, that little scat back, 170, freshman Miami, Florida, and somehow ran through a pile of Tennessee defenders. Well, he is a lightning bolt. He is quick. He's fast. But, you know, a lot of these young, these young or these smaller running back types, one of the things that they naturally have because of their size is incredible balance. And you, you, you really have to wrap up on a smaller running back like that because if you just hit him, a lot of times they'll bounce with you and they'll keep going. First and 10, 
Ole Miss, Masoli up over the top, got his man inside the 10 yard line, Melvin Harris. That was a rope off the hand of Masoli. Well, finally we get one delivered on time on the money by Jeremiah Masoli and a great job. Did you see that at the top of the route, Melvin Harris? He had hard inside coverage by the cornerback, but he used his big body. He's six foot seven, 205 pounds, and said, I'm getting across your face. And great confidence by Jeremiah Masoli to know that and make the throw. Second catch of the day for Harris. Bolden cuts inside the five, and he'll be down at the two yard line. So Ole Miss trying to answer here late in the first half of play, and it's the hurry up. Yep, no, no huddle. Masoli, handoff, Bolden, touchdown. Oh, that's huge for Ole Miss. You need that touchdown going into the half. Now, obviously, there's plenty of time for Tyler Bray, a minute 54, to come back. The defense has to do their job, but to pull within two touchdowns in on a positive note like that for the offense, you've got to feel good about that. See, that was all about field position. It was. It was. And that's that's, that's the, how important those special teams' yards are and, and keeping a team backed up when you get the opportunity. Bryson Rose set to try the PAT, kick is away and good. Four plays, 59 yards. The key play was that Melvin Harris catch. Bolden powers in. It's a 14-point game in Knoxville. Of the season, 28-14, Tennessee. Well, Dave's all new with Hawaii five hey, uh, all, all stars Scott Kahn and also Emma Watson and Rascal Flatts. Then watch the Late Late Show with Craig Ferguson, only on CBS. That's Dave, all new. So Andrew Ritter will kick away for Ole Miss. Now we've seen a reverse already out of Tennessee today on the kickoff return. It's important, imperative for Ole Miss to have good kickoff coverage with a minute 54 left in the half. You don't want to give Tyler Bray and this Tennessee offense good field position on this drive. Kicks away and they're, they're going to drive it into the ground. Wow, give it to him at the 40 wow. yard line. Wow, went out to 10. Went out of the 10 yard line and now the field position. You know, Ole Miss just had great field position. Tennessee walks on the field at the 40. Unbelievable. That, 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 that's the kind of stuff that drives coaches crazy. Free kick out of bounds. Ole Miss. Ball will be placed at the 40 yard line. First down. Derek Dooley cannot be happy with that, but he has been happy with the three touchdown passes from Tyler Bray today. Justin Hunter right there, first play of the game for Tennessee. Should have been a pick, ends up being at seven. Right there, Daenerys Moore on fire for his touchdown, and then back to Justin Hunter for the big high jumper. Touchdown, Tennessee. Under two minutes to play, Bray goes back to the air and behind Tarrant Poole. That's incomplete, stops the clock with 1.50 to play. 28-14, Tennessee. Craig, you know, football people talk about hidden yardage. Yards that you don't see in the scoreboard and the stats. Right there is a perfect example. Giving the ball to Tennessee at the 20 yard line as opposed to a typical kickoff coverage team, which you, you, you think they get that ball somewhere between the 20 and 30 yard line, normally speaking. Those are the kind of plays that kill you, and they've happened repeatedly against Old Miss today. Second down, 10, 40 yard line. Play clock to five. Cutback. It's a beauty pool for the 47, maybe the 48. Mike Mary, who made his first career start last week against Louisiana Lafayette with the stop. And don't forget, coming up after our game here in Knoxville, Georgia and number two Auburn on CBS. Doubleheader day, SEC. Got to love it. Gray throws far side up. Right on the hands. How did Gerald Jones take that catch? Jones is only six feet. I thought maybe Hunt, Hunter, you know, Justin Hunter's the jumper. But Gerald Jones went up and took that ball down. Now, this is a mistake by Marcus Temple. Right there, the corner. Look, see how he jumps up? That, that cornerback is told to play the receiver on that play. He's coming in from the outside. He has got to, he's in perfect position to separate Gerald Jones from that football. That's what he's supposed to do. He jumps up. Gives Gerald Jones a catch and then turns up the side. Those are plays that kill you. 
Jones, two catches for 24 yards, and Tennessee's knocking on the door with a first down at the 30-yard line. Bray, good protection, one pump, sends it across the middle short, and a one-hopper at the 11-yard line, incomplete. And Gerald Jones, the intended receiver. Uh, Bray took one in the chops again, man. I, I'll tell you, these Tennessee quarterbacks, while this whole line is getting, getting, getting its experience, their quarterbacks are taking some shots. I want to go back and look at this kid because Bray at this time last year was in high school. He was playing for Kingsburg High School in California. He went 13 and 0. Steve, he threw for over 3,300 yards and 41 touchdowns. Yeah, and still the only other two schools that were recruiting him were Fresno State and San Diego State. Happy to end up in Tennessee. Uh, he found a home underneath. Catches made by the tight end Stocker, wrapped up. Mike Mary. I'm looking at the timeouts if needed in this game. Tennessee with two, Ole Miss one remaining in the first half. It's a third down timeout and six. Tennessee, and Tennessee, second timeout of the half. Tennessee takes the timeout. 108 down the stretch. First half in Knoxville. Well, Bray and the Vols are set. There's been some popping and hitting going on out there. You see the grass stains on the back of Bray's jersey. He's been on his back a few times. He, uh, welcome to the SEC, my friend. Yeah, you're going to take some shots, and then especially behind a young offensive line in the SEC, you know, that there's, some, there's some speed and some players on the other side most of the time. Third down and six, Bray in the pocket, stands up, got a man, sideline, makes the grab is Justin Hunter. But he dropped it incomplete. Boy, he took a shot too. Damian Jackson, the hard hitter, and he's onto the off to the sideline, yeah, holding that left hand. Yeah, he hurt himself through that left shoulder in there. You can see, boy, I tell you, Bray almost gets that ball in there. And it looks like it's the right shoulder to me, and it, it, it kind of caught it. I think he went running off, kind of with that left shoulder, left arm hanging funny. So field goal. Attempt here of 43 yards. Seven of seven on the season, as long as 49. This will be from 43 yards off the right hash mark. High snap, hold is down, the kick is away, and sneaks it through from 43. Boy, Lincoln has kicked the ball well after missing five straight games with a leg injury, but 43 yards, and he willed it through. But you know what, Craig? There's some people that might consider that okay for Ole Miss. And sure, it's better than a touchdown, but still a failure. Back to New York. Here's Tim. One of the big stories, of course, in college football. Auburn for one, and then Cam Newton the second. A great turnaround by the Auburn Tigers this season. And now, late here in this college football season, the, uh, uh, the talk of Cam Newton uh, is taking over radio, newspapers, all the talk of college. And that, that's one of the questions a lot of people are asking. In fact, even Houston Nutt, we were talking to him earlier this week. He said, why, why does it come out now? Why, why would it come out at this point in the season? Well. Bottom line is it has, and now it's being dealt with. And I believe Cam Newton will be playing later on tonight. It's 31 to 14 under a minute to play. Short kick. Ole Miss on the run. Mark Keith, that's Derek Herman. Herman with the short punt out kick. I'm just wondering why you go short. Why don't you put it, that ball deep? I, I don't understand the logic. Because now you got a chance for Ole Miss to move two, two or three plays, and you've got a field goal opportunity. I, I do not understand the logic at all. I, it was a mistake for Ole Miss to kick it out of bounds, give it to Tennessee at the 40. Right there was a decision by Tennessee to hit that little pooch kickoff. Now you give Ole Miss the ball at the 40-yard line. Ole Miss might have a chance to make up for their mistake last drive. I, Three wide receiver set, top of your screen, the Soli shotgun. Sets and fires, far side, little seam, and the catch by Jamez Logan, redshirt freshman, Houston, Texas. 
One timeout remaining for Ole Miss, and the clock is running under 40 seconds. Yeah, Masoli, need, he needs to make a play up the field here. you got plenty of time, one timeout, but the little dinks for four or five yards are not going to help you right here. Masoli pressure into the pocket. He goes. Looks downfield, head to the sideline, out of bounds, stops the clock with 21 seconds. Well, you look at what the, this this guy is a first half sensation Tyler Bray who's now watching from the sideline at Memphis in the first half a 308 yards five touchdowns today's put 265 and three so eight how about six quarters of football and you have eight touchdowns now, that's pretty impressive stuff no doubt about it but I'll tell you what wasn't impressive Jeremiah Masoli ran the ball out of bounds lost eight yards put his team in third and 14 on that play throw the ball away Trying to spin is Melvin Harris. And Harris with his third grab, now a 43 yards. And Ole Miss will burn the timeout, their final. You know what I'm talking about there, though, Craig? Jeremiah Masoli rolling out to the right side. They had a second and six. And instead of throwing the ball away when nothing was there and having third and six, he runs out of bounds for an eight-yard loss. And now they're looking at third and 14. And of course, they didn't get it right there. They picked up about five or six yards. Now it's fourth and eight. But those are decisions. Those are decisions that a quarterback has control of. You got to have presence. When you get near that sideline, throw the ball to your coach on the sideline. You're out of the pocket. Throw it to your coach. You got third and six. You got a chance to make it. But now you're looking at fourth and eight. Lou Holtz used to tell me, Steve Berline. Whenever you're in trouble back there, I'm always wide open on the sidelines. No one's ever been able to cover me on the sidelines. <laughs> oh, Lou. So, yeah, I mean, that's just a basic rule. Quarterback, you want to play quarterback big time, you got to make simple decisions like that. No timeouts remaining for Ole Miss. They're looking at fourth down and eight, 13 seconds of play. They're going to go for it on. Oh, they're going to pooch punt it. Nice call. Inside the 10, takes a bounce, still alive at the eight yard line. So a second to play, you come out, you take a knee, you go to the locker room and you talk about it. Yeah, no doubt. And I, I'm still kind of fuming myself about the, the, the dilemma that Ole Miss put themselves into on that last drive, giving Tennessee the field. There's a huge difference between going down, going in down 28-14 and going in down 31 to 14. It's now a three-score ball game. There's no excuse for the plays that happened on that last drive by Ole Miss's defense. Number one, the kickoff out of bounds. Number two, we had the, the play on the outside where Marcus Temple had a chance to make a play on Gerald Jones. Did not make the play. It ends up being a big play for Tennessee. Tennessee goes down and kicks the field goal. On a knee. And that's going to do the first half of play here in Knoxville. Tennessee opens up in the first half and lead 31-14 over Ole Miss. We take you now to Tim Brando in our New York studio. Lead Craig Bullerjack, Steve Erline. Uh, interesting first half. Let's talk about Tennessee. They came out and boarded. They strike early in this ball game. They did. It started on the first play of the game. Tyler Bray making what would be considered a bad decision, but it worked out pretty well for him. Should have been intercepted by Jonathan Cornell. Instead, Justin Hunter, the big six foot four, true freshman on the receiving end, takes it to the house. Tennessee's up after one play, seven and up, and then a bad decision by Jeremiah, Jeremiah Masoli. Right there, Eric Gordon on the Pick for six. I'll tell you, Masoli struggled the whole first half, in my opinion. Not throwing the ball very well. Seems like his rhythm is off now. He is coming off that concussion. So we do know that maybe he didn't get all the reps in practice this week. Was not a real sharp first half for him at all. If you look at the first half numbers, rush yards jump out at you. Tennessee with just seven. Uh, passing yards, they make up for it in a big way with 265 with Bray's arm. Time of possession, Ole Miss actually had the ball a little bit longer. Penalties even up at four flags apiece, but it was the big plays. The big plays uh, in the first half, the difference maker, and a lead of 31-14 at the half for the Vols. Well, there was the interception for a touchdown that led directly to seven, obviously, but then there's been some key penalties by Ole Miss. It said, didn't look like much, only four for 47 yards, but they came at the wrong times. Like, for example, the kickoff at the end of the first half that gave Tennessee possession at the 40-yard line. And there were several others where 
Ole Miss made a good play in the backfield, and all of a sudden there's a penalty called, and they get a they give Tennessee a first down after making a good successful stop. So it's been one of those days for Ole Miss. Ole Miss won the opening toss. They chose to take the foot football to start this football game. So Tennessee will have it to start the third quarter here in Knoxville in a 31-14 lead. Big kick, no return, five yards deep, and the Vols will start at their own 20-yard line. And here comes Bray, who went 13-24, 265, three touchdowns. And I'll tell you, there are a lot of things to like about this kid. He, he, uh, he doesn't seem overwhelmed by it at all. Does he make great decisions every single time? No, but very few true freshmen do. In fact, even seniors, everybody makes mistakes, but the guy has a presence about him on the field, moving around, making plays. There's no doubt he does have a, a tendency to make decisions that end up working out for him and his teammates. So Bray goes back to work the SEC Freshman of the Week after last week's performance and that win against Memphis. On the play action, they throw to the flat with a pitch and catch. Gerald Jones kicks it into another gear and rumbles up to near the 40-yard line. We're talking 20 yards on the opening play of quarter number three. And a, a good way to get Gerald Jones involved. You know, it's been all Daenerys Moore and Justin Hunter in the first half. If you can establish that third guy in your package, and Gerald Jones is a guy that, believe me, Ole Miss knows who he is. He's moved into the top 10 all-time career reception in Tennessee history. He's a very, very good football player. They get him going, too. Look out. 33 catches on the season now for Gerald Jones. Three this afternoon. And trying to weave his way through the front of Ole Miss is Torrin Poole. You know, he's fifth in the SEC in rush yards per game at 81 yards. Last week against Memphis, 101 yards and a touchdown. Had a couple receptions for 50 yards and a touchdown as well. He likes to catch the football. He's that uh, multi-purpose kind of back for uh, Derek Dooley. Yeah, he can do it, man. He, 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 he ran for 162 yards against Oregon, 117 against Alabama, 109 against LSU. That's some pretty good defenses. Shotgun, quick throw. He chopped him down with Stocker. You hit Jerry McGee, took him down. Where do you hit the big guys? Thigh pads. Hit him low, and I'll tell you, this is the kind of play that I think Marcus Temple should have made on on Gerald Jones in the first half. At the end of the first half, when he went for the ball, instead of making the hit, let him catch the ball. It'll be a two or three yard gain at max. Right there, a good solid decision by Jeremy McGee. Third down at seven. Clock runs up on 13 minutes of play in this third quarter. First drive of the second half. Tennessee up by a count of 31-14. Gray's gone the distance at quarterback. Shotgun, good protection. Slings it over the middle. Gerald Jones is upended and dropped at the 46-yard line. Marcus Temple. I mean, that's a wrap up there. Yeah, that's, that, a, that's a hit and a tackle, and down goes Tennessee. That was textbook by Marcus Temple. Let's listen to it. Yeah, and then finishing it, too. Great job by Marcus Temple. Gerald Jones had no idea he was going to be running into that buzzsaw sitting there waiting for him. Tyler Bray, I think, tried to stop him by putting the ball behind him a little bit, but Gerald Jones didn't get the message. Cunningham will punt away, averaging 33 yards a kick at his own 31-yard line. As he came up three yards short of a first down and a good kick. Line drive. Randy lets it drop at the five-yard line. Ole Miss will be deep in their own territory. That's a great boot from Cunningham. A punt of 50 yards. We'll be back. It was a special moment yesterday, unveiling the General Robert Nealon statue outside this fine football facility. Of course, uh, the General built this program and just a terrific coach. And that is a terrific statue and it's more, Steve, than life size. That, that, that is it's almost as big as Abe Lincoln, isn't it? Back in D.C., that thing looked huge. What a great job, though. Ole Miss with the football down 31-14, first possession of the third quarter. They start at the five-yard line. Masoli at the quarterback, and they hand the ball off, and pushing the pile is Bolden. Maybe a yard, maybe two, and time now for our Aflac trivia question. 
And what current SEC program did General Robert Nealon have his best career record against? And let me just tell you a little hint, he's had a lot of success in SEC play. <laughs> That's a big hint. <laughs> Think about it, we'll have the answer a little bit later on. On second and eight after the pickup of two, Masoli in his oh, own end zone. No. Oh, picked! Oh my, Tennessee, touchdown! Prentice Wagner, his third reception, pick six of the season. Third interception touchdown of the season, and I'll tell you, it, it could not have been handed to him any better than Jeremiah Masola. He knows that he's shaking his head. I, I, as that ball was in the air, I, I was speechless because I could not believe that he was throwing that pass at any point, much less out of his own end zone. It looked like it was going right to Wagner, who returned a interception for a touchdown, 54 yards against University of Tennessee. Martin, he went nine yards for a touchdown against UAB, and this time runs it back 10 yards, and you have to think that ball looked like it was meant. It looked like it was meant for Pr Prentice Wagner. We'll be back. He has returned two touchdowns for interceptions, and they own a 38 to 14 lead over Ole Miss. Wagner's third interception, and he's ran them all three back for touchdowns this season. That's pretty impressive right there in and of itself. Dirty. 54 yards against Uni University of Tennessee Martin, nine yards against UAB, and he goes 10. Well, he's also got three, against fumble, Miss. three fumble recoveries. He, two of them were last week. So the guy's, uh, he's one of those turnover magnets. You know, he makes things happen. Kick is going to be short, 10-yard line. Herman spins out of a tackle and reaches past the 40 to the 41-yard line. So that's where Masoli and Ole Miss will try to shake off the blues and get back to work. Well, I want to show you what happened on this last one. Watch Masoli as he rolls to his left. I think he, there was no real reason for him to throw it as soon as he did. He could have stretched it a little bit longer. Look right here. I want you to watch. That's Prentice Wagner right there. There's going to be room over the top of him if he would have found a way to stretch it a little bit. If, if there's any doubt in your mind, though, with Prentice Wagner sitting out there, you can't blow the pass over the top. You throw it away out of bounds. You don't waste the opportunity to, to get back into this ball game like that. Ole Miss stays on the ground with Bolden and a host of white helmets on top of number 34. Bolden out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. You know, Masoli, I'm just, I've got to just speak out and just wonder, you know, the concussion last week in the first quarter against Louisiana Lafayette. It was up to game time that they were going to make a decision on Masoli. And really, Steve, you know what? It's tough. You get nicked. And you know what? You're just a half a second behind every play. And that kind of looks like the case today. Well, I want to get into that with you in a second, Craig. We'll, we'll talk about it, but I agree with you 100%. Masoli shotgun. Throws a dart far side. It's caught. And Herman. Picks up the first down. Let's check in with Tim back in New York. All right, Tim, thanks. That uh, ball game under seven minutes left to play. Here we've got 10 30 in the third. So far, Tennessee in a walk over Ole Miss, 38-14. The Rebels at midfield, trying to get something going. Masoli throws it up over the middle, into coverage, another interception, his third of the day. Jansen Jackson on the run, splits down the sideline, out of bounds at the 37-yard line. Craig, I, I was going to say before that play, when we, before we went to the update in New York, that I don't believe that Jeremiah Masoli should be in this ball game. He's obviously off. He's had a tremendous year. He's a great leader, a great player, but he is killing this football team right now. This is his third really, really bad interception. That was first and 10 from the 45-yard line, and it, the only time you make this throw up the field is if it's wide open. If it's not there, you come to your check down or you get rid of the football. 
There's no reason to throw that ball. All three of his interceptions have been terrible interceptions. There's no gray area. They've been really bad. And two return for touchdowns. Now, I just think it's not his day. He's out of it. Houston Nutt needs to make a change. Gray, quarterbacking. Tennessee wants to run some clock now with this big lead. Rodgers, the ball carrier. That's his 10th carry of the season out of Calhoun, Georgia, just a sophomore. You can talk all you want about the youth of, of Tennessee, and Derek Dooley made that point to us. You know, his quote was, I'm rebuilding the foundation of Tennessee football. He understands when Lane Kiffin left, there was a lot of youth. He's had to bring in young players. And you know what? There are some pains, many pains, when you have to grow up. They lost a lot of players through defecting to different schools through that transition. This program was put in a very difficult position. Flag stops the play down the six. Prior to the snap, false start, offensive line. Five yard penalty, still first down. Let's see if you go back, and I think those numbers prove out. Just uh, Masoli just doesn't seem right today. Yeah, there's not, I mean, there's absolutely nothing that you can say good about that day. He's had players open throughout the course of this game. In the first half especially, there were plays to be made, and he was missing those throws. And then some of the decisions, there's, there you see Nathan Stanley right there getting ready to go, and it looks like the decision's been made. I, I admire Houston not for sticking with his starting quarterback, but uh, there comes a time where it's just not going to happen. Gray throws a little early. He took a shot on that play, too. And Moore a little slow on the turnaround, and we look at Masoli's woes. Yeah, you see the first interception late to the outside. Eric Gordon right there to pick it off and take it to the house. Touchdown, bad decision late, and then this one out of his own end zone. Kind of a floater up and over the top. Prentice Wagner right there to capitalize another touchdown. And then the last one here on first and 10, trying to get some rhythm going right away. Throws a deep one, and Jansen Jackson picks that off and takes it back. Just just three bad decisions. The number is 7 of 18, three picks, 80 yards total through the air for Masoli. And now, a, and now a timeout taken. We'll step aside, 8.56 to play in the third in Knoxville. Now the wind has picked up a bit in Knoxville. That brings us to the answer to our AFLAC trivia question. What current SEC program did General Robert Nealon have his best career record against? And the answer would be the Kentucky Wildcats of 16-0-5. Back in the days of ties. Five ties. That's unacceptable. <laughs> I'm sure that's the way Play on. Nealon probably felt about it. I don't think any coach wants to tie. No. no. You play to win. Under nine minutes to play here at third quarter. And Tyler Bray at the helm for Tennessee. Sets up and fires and circus catch by Gerald Jones. Now I got a little bit more trivia for you on, on the general. Okay, he also he never lost to Florida. He never lost to Georgia. And he never lost to South Carolina. But look at the most wins. He had great success against Vandy. Obviously had great success against Ole Miss and Alabama. Pretty impressive. I don't know if the SEC was as dominant back in those days or not, but uh, that's that's a complete domination that's of all a, those teams. There's why, that's why there's a statue out front. Yeah, that, that is exactly why. Third down and 15 for Bray. Hands up in the pocket, over the top, right on the button. Luke Stocker still on his feet, drags a couple of Rebels past the 35, and they knock him down at the 33-yard line. A good, strong throw on third and 14 by Taylor Bra Tyler Bray. But look, just a bust, I think, down the middle of the field. There should have been a linebacker running with Luke Stalker down the middle of the field. Made it too easy for Tyler Bray to pick up that, that first down. He, he will be glad to take advantage of the busted coverage. Stalker with four catches, 36 yards on the day. 28 receptions on the season. 74 career during his time in Knoxville. Bray all day. Watch out, taken down. Jason Jones. Yeah, that's one play where Tyler Bray did have time to get rid of the football. You just 
You can't ever, as a quarterback at this level, stand there and hitch and hitch and hitch. Eventually, at some point, they're going to get to you. There's no doubt about it. And that time right there, Jason Jones is the one that got to Tyler Bray. And, you know, the good thing about it is that Tyler Bray did hang on to the football with that blindside shot. You know, Matt Sims got into trouble a few a couple weeks back in South Carolina. He had two fumbles on sacks, which really hurt the balls. Second down, 13. Tennessee stretch it. Cool, watch out. Breaks it away. 10-5. Touchdown, Tennessee. Another gear. I mean, that is another gear that Tarrant Poole just kicked into. Oh, man, that, that was, he saw it, and he took off no hesitation. That was a, a pretty darn big hole. I think even you and I might got pretty excited seeing that hole open up in front of us. We couldn't have got through it quite that easily. <laughs> but, man, Tarrant Poole, he is a finisher and very impressive one more time on the touchdown run. And once again, Daniel Lincoln will try the point after coming right at you, drills it up and good. Turnovers, big plays, the big story here in Knoxville, a 36-yard runaway by Tarrant Poole. And Tennessee, 45, Ole Miss, 14. He's going to be in uniform tonight. I would be tremendously surprised if he wasn't. With everything at stake and only allegations as far as we know, I think he'll be out there tonight. Short kick. Jeff Scott runs up on Scott. it and hits a pile around the 34-yard line. And now we'll see a new quarterback. So Masoli's done for the day after the three picks. And we'll see the sophomore, Nathan Stanley, who did come in last week after Masoli was shaken at Louisiana, Louisiana Lafayette. He went 6 of 14 for 108 yards. That's his season numbers. Yeah, for those of you yeah, the three touchdowns in the opening game against Jacksonville State, which Houston Nutt, quarterback, along, along with the loss to Vanderbilt, the, the two big, big, big issues that put these guys behind the eight ball early in the season. Stanley 6'5", 215, a sophomore. Ole Miss stays on the ground, tries to punch it up the middle. Enrique Davis, let's take you back to New York for the John Hancock update. Here's Tim. Thank you, Tim. That was the Heisman watch presented by Nissan. All eyes. Who will win the Heisman? Ole Miss heads to the near sideline. Davis again bumped out of bounds. They'll mark him out at the 47-yard line. Oh, boy, I like Davis. When he runs, he's got power. Six-footer, 220. Good speed. Doesn't, doesn't, uh, they don't throw the football to him, but he, uh, has terrific legs, and there's a flag at the 35. Offense 33. 10-yard penalty for the previous spot. Still second down. That was the fullback, Epperson, number 33. Just when you get something rolling, Ole Miss bites himself. I mean, that's it's been the it's been the MO all day. And it's been the story from the very get-go. Early on in the game, when they had opportunities to make plays, they weren't making them. When they did make a play, it seemed like they always had a penalty going against them or a key turnover that came back to really haunt them. Houston Nutt cannot be very happy with the, uh, the way this game is. There's not been a point in the game where his team has really put a, a, any kind of a scare at all into Tennessee. Ole Miss 1-4 and four in the SEC West. They set up the screen pass. Boy, did Tennessee smell it. They went on the hunt. That was Austin Johnson, the weak side linebacker. And he smelled it and went right for it. In the West, Auburn 6-0, 10-0, perfect season. And you have to question, will that season remain unbeaten? LSU 8-1. Les Miles continues to win. And Ole Miss, now remember, if they'd stumble today, which they're going to have some issues, you know, you just got, you have to, you got to be six wins to be bowl eligible. And they're looking at their largest deficit of the season. 
That means they've got to win out at LSU and Mississippi State at home to have a chance at getting to a bowl game. Pressure. Stanley fires it away, and it's out of bounds. Ole Miss, Ole Miss sideline, and that brings up fourth and 20. I see this is what uh, what you're talking about today. We're Tennessee next week at number five LSU. A lot riding with less miles and the Tigers and then you finish up at home against Mississippi State. Those are some. Yeah, I'm glad you did that because those are some costly early season losses. Those are the ones that put them behind the eight ball. You know, high hopes coming into this season, but to lose to Jacksonville State, which, by the way, is a pretty good football team. They lost their first game last week. It's a good team, but, but not a game that Ole Miss should be messing around with. High, high punt. Jackson. Oh! <laughs> that ball's out. And they still can't recover it. Tennessee, a pile up at the 15 yard line. Ten Tennessee recovered it again. Oh, my. Boy, the pads are popping in this lopsided I don't, affair. I don't know who it was. There was a, a, a great hit, obviously, on the play. But right there, man, you know, you just have to find a way to come up with the ball. Now let's go back and check out those two losses. And you mentioned it will haunt Ole Miss this year. And in the season opener, they led Jacksonville State 31 to 10 before suffering one of the most embarrassing losses in school history. The final in two overtimes, 49-48. And two weeks later, Ole Miss was defeated at home by Vandy, 28 to 14. Those are games that put a sting on you, and it takes maybe sometimes you don't recover. It's been one of those seasons for Houston Nutt. Well, you just feel like you're climbing uphill every single week when you get yourself in that hole, a two and uh, you know one and two hole. That's Malik. No, that's Jansen. Jansen Jackson down on the uh, on the punt return. Sophomore out of Lake Charles, Louisiana, and just a sophomore. He's had a couple of picks on the season. Yeah, he had his the big pick uh, on the previous series of. Uh, Jeremiah it was a kind of a gift interception, of course, but this is a guy, Jansen Jackson, has been making plays for this Tennessee volunteer team all year. Now the trainer's around. He's just trying to get to his feet. Well, I'll tell you, one of the things, though, that I, that, that I think people are overlooking, and you walk around town here, you talk to people about Tennessee, Obviously, people are down because they're not used to going through this kind of stuff. Jansen Jackson up on his feet. But the fact is, they are going through it. What's happening is a lot of these young players are getting vital experience, and they're going to be better because of it. Let's see that last play here. Let's see what happened. Listen to it. He came off favoring, I don't know if that's thigh, knee, or ankle, but he's limping off the field after being down. And now Tennessee will go back to work with a very comfortable 45 to 14 lead here late in the third quarter. Ball's going to run to come around the edge, and Ole Miss is still dishing out the hit. Zach Rogers, number 83, with his third carry of the year. I'll tell you what, some guys have been shaken up in this football game. And Rodgers, I don't know if Rodgers knows where he is. Yeah, he's a little woozy, too. There's some popping going on out there, no doubt. And he's getting some help to find his seat on the sideline. Well, think about how many young players there are out there on the field, though, right now for Tennessee. A lot of true freshmen that... Are, they gained confidence last week against Memphis, obviously, and now today is only going to make them feel better about themselves. Second down at six in the sun. Right up over the top is Tyler Bray. Complete first down. And let's go back to New York now for the John Hancock update. Tim, I will tell you this, that does not look like the player who's going to be sitting or standing on the sidelines today. Cam Newton of Auburn. No, that does not look like Gerald Pohl right there bursting through, making a tackle in the backfield. But 
you know, maybe a little bit of gamesmanship on behalf of <laughs> on Auburn's part a little bit too with Gene Chizik and the staff. Maybe they decided to kind of use that the whole situation to their advantage. Not that they want to be in the situation, but the uncertainty. Coach Mike Richt and his Georgia staff trying to figure out if he's going to play, if he's not going to play, they got to make adjustments. Well, there's a Heisman on the line, along with a national championship. I'm sure they felt pretty strongly that he was going to play. Incomplete. That brings up third down and 13 with 316 on the clock here in the third. It's been a Tennessee kind of day. And this young man, Tyler Bray, again, with back-to-back -back very impressive performances. Right, and I think one thing that needs to be mentioned, you know, he, he's getting the chance to play now early. He obviously has the confidence of his teammates and the coaching staff, but Matt Sims, the quarterback to play before, in my opinion, was playing good football. There were a couple of things that Tyler Bray brings to the team that that maybe Matt doesn't have in terms of elusiveness and ability like that that the coaches feel strongly about, but I think Matt Sims is playing good football and is a good quarterback. Play action, launches that ball up and incomplete. I think the key word, one word would be escapability. There is just something about, and we talked to the players as, as, as well, Poole and company, there's just that extra half second that he gives his Tennessee offense. I, I think that that can be validated by when, by, by when you look at it on film and when you look at how he does make some people miss. I do think that Matt Sims, though, we saw him run a couple weeks or a few weeks ago when they played LSU in that heartbreaking loss. Matt Sims ran the ball well himself. But it's just that instinctive ability to maybe buy a little extra time that, that uh, got him in a little bit of trouble. So the short kick and Ole Miss will have the ball at the 45-yard line. And tomorrow here on CBS, the Amazing Race teams are off to the Middle East for an exotic adventure. Don't miss a new Amazing Race after 60 minutes. That's tomorrow here on CBS. Looks like somebody's asking somebody to get married. <laughs> You know, one last comment on Matt Sims. I did get a chance to talk to him pregame warm-up today and went down and just wanted to see how he was doing. And I'll tell you, he looked me in the eye and said, hey, I'm going to get a chance to play again. I'm not worried about it. I'm going to just get myself ready and make sure I'm ready the next opportunity. We'll give it to Bolden. Find some room. Could not get to the edge, and he's tackled down at the 49. Nice tackle by Brent Brewer. And now time to check in for the Red Lobster. Today's scholar athlete, Herman Lathers, a 3.17 sports management. And Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to the Tennessee General Scholarship Fund. Bolden gets the call again, and he is running down the sideline, and it pulls up a little bit as he's out of bounds at the 28-yard line. Bolden's been the only really only bright spot for this uh, Ole Miss offense today. Yeah, they, they, they have not had any rhythm whatsoever in the passing game. And as a result, Bolden has been the one guy that's, that's been able to step up. You know, Enrique Davis has made a couple of plays too, but I would suspect in this situation, given a 31-point deficit, Nathan Stanley's going to have some opportunities to make plays in the passing game. Bolden, 113 yards on the ground, his fifth. 100-yard rushing game of the season, his seventh in his career at Ole Miss. Stanley wants to throw good protection. Pocket collapses, and so does Stanley. Corey Miller, the freshman, off the left edge. He's played in all 10 ball games for Tennessee, and I'm sure now he'll get some extended playing time for this young fella, but you know, you still go back to just getting experience. And in a game like this, freshmen will see a lot of oh, a lot of snaps in this game. No doubt. The Tennessee freshmen are seeing a lot of snaps in every game, but almost exclusively from this point forward in a game like this, there were a lot of orange shirts there. Nathan Stanley, he saw the corner blitz coming. He knew there was pressure coming. He's a young quarterback. He's got to know when to get rid of that football, too. You can't just sit there and hold on to it, hold on to it. You've got to throw it somewhere. And rolling up on a minute left to play in the third. Second down, 15, snaps fumble. Get on it, get on it! And he does. Oh, <laughs> you feel like a coach up here. Yeah. You know what, what have we seen all day today? Players trying to pick the ball yeah. up instead of just get, hey, live to play another day. Exactly right, and that's, I think he realized that. And let, let, let's just, you look at the, the stars today for Ole Miss. Now Melvin Harris, I think, is a guy that they need to make a more exerted effort to get the football to. He's six foot seven, 205 pounds. Hard guy to match up against for any defensive back. But the big, the big issue today was right there, obviously. Jeremiah Masoli. Bolden's done his part, 113 yards, a couple of touchdowns. Just didn't happen for Jeremiah Masoli. Third down and a half mile. 27 is movement and a flag. 
Gerald Williams hopped off the line a little bit early. And Jeff Scott is tank taken down to the 40 yard line. Here's the call. Offside, defense 57, five yard penalty, repeat third down. Well, we hear that Zach Rogers is a questionable return with a, the head injury. Definitely looked like he was a little out of it coming off the field. And then uh, we heard Jansen Jackson ankle. questionable with an ankle injury. There's a look at Rogers. Final seconds of the third quarter, third down 22 for Ole Miss. Stanley takes a low snap, steps up in the pocket, goes over the top. He's got man coverage and incomplete. Good defense on Marquise Summers, Anthony Anderson. That's the end of the third quarter. So they try to out jump the Tennessee defense, and we end the third quarter in Knoxville. Tennessee 45 and Ole Miss 14 will return to Neyland Stadium right after this message in a word from your local station. Lowering the cost of bright spirits. Now get a 100 count light set for 228. Tennessee on their way to their first SEC win of the season. They dominated early and they not let up on the pedal. Now, Ole Miss came back with a couple of touchdowns, Steve, in the fourth quarter, but it's been shut out since. Well, they're going for it right now, fourth and 22, trying to cut into that lead a little bit more as we start the fourth quarter. Stanley, the quarterback, four wide receiver set on fourth down, 22. Stanley. Steps up, throws a deep ball. On a string and coverage, there's flags down, not one but two. <laughs> That's what we were talking about. That's the big Melvin Harris, six foot seven, just saying, I don't think anybody can get up as high as you can. Could be pass interference. Tyler Wolf was there. Anthony Anderson also defending that pass play. And here again is Matt Austin. Pass interference, offense number oh. five. 15-yard penalty to the previous spot. Repeat fourth down. How about that? Harris pushes off, and he's had two guys hanging on his back. Oh, I mean, you, you just, it's just not going to happen. There's the push. Him. There's the push oh, right yeah, there. No, no question. Doubt. No doubt. Gave him the advantage. Yeah. That's a good call. Push the back of Anthony Anderson. What? Do you, do you go for it now on fourth and 27? I don't think so. How about 37? 37, that's right. It's a 10 yard penalty. Yep. Ole Miss with six flags, 72 yards. Here's a look at Houston Nutt. Had some great success at Arkansas. Was the coach there for 10 years with the Razorbacks. He's led Ole Miss to a couple of back to back Cotton Bowls, but this year it has been a struggle. At 37. Yep, and you know, there, there have been some key injuries on this Ole Miss team. One of the injuries that everybody seems to bring up is Kentrell Lockett, the, the, the senior defensive end who was a huge part of, of every part of this Ole Miss ball club. Well, now with a knee injury in week four against Fresno State. And the ball is down at the 12-yard line. Fourth quarter in Knoxville, Tennessee up big. Knoxville. Can you repeat that one more time for me? <laughs> well, I would say we've done a lot of football, and this uh, it's been up and down the field, big plays, picks, runbacks. Most every one of them going going for the men in orange today. It's a 45-14 Tennessee lead. Balls want to chew up some clock, and they're going to go to the ground and let Poole carry the load up to around the 18-yard line. 
by Walker and Good job Kutka. running by Torin Poole right there. A little hesitation before he made that final cut to take it up inside and pick up six good yards. Had a good talk with Poole out of Tacoa, Georgia, just outside Athens. You know, they get it. I mean, he's a junior. He's going to be back for a year. But, you know, there was some, you know, there was a downtime in this program with Philip Fulmer departure, the quick cup of coffee by Lane Kiffin, and then Derek Dooley comes in, wants to do it his way. When you take over a program, Steve, and you know this in the pros and college ranks, you will hire a coach to do it his way. And that's what Derek Dooley is doing at Tennessee. And on that note, there are going to be some growing pains. There are going to be some some people that aren't happy with things along the way. But boy, from every indicator we get, talking to everybody, and we talk to guys like Gerald Jones and, and Torin Poole, as you said, and some of these older guys, Lamarcus Thompson. These guys are guys that get it, that understand, especially the older guys. The Gerald Jones, as you said, you know, and, and Lamarcus Thompson, especially, who said, you know, I want to be a part of getting this thing straightened out. Our legacy is going to be the fact that we helped get this thing started under Coach Dooley. Handoff. Boy, Ole Miss still coming strong. Damian Jackson laying the wood down. And you look at the Vol starters today. How about 323 passing for Bray? 114 for 156 yards on eight carries for Poole and a touchdown along the way. And there, there were a lot of other people we could have put on there as well. A couple of defensive players and Denarius Moore with the, the big first half as well. But a lot of a lot of playmakers on the ball side of the ball today. Play clock to 15. Second down and 12. As we roll up on 12 minutes left to play. Georgia Auburn will be coming your way tonight on CBS. Push down of bounds is Pool. What makes Thursday the nerdiest night of the week? We've got a pretty good theory. An all new Big Bang Theory. Thursday on CBS. You're looking forward to that Georgia Auburn game a little later today. Going to be a lot of eyeballs on that ball game. Oh, yeah. Third down and five. Play clock to five. Play clock four. Get the snap away. We'll throw far side. It's incomplete. Let's go to New York. Here's Tim. All right, thank you, Tim. Cunningham back on the field, averaging 37 yards a punt on the day. Markeith Summers is set to return. Summers high hanger takes it 28-yard line. Bounces his way to the 34. Or returning punts, that's a scary business. It's a scary business. Your computer running. And back in Knoxville, 11-19, down the stretch, fourth quarter. It's been a Tennessee day. Haven't had to rush the ball. They've gone to the air. Yeah, 323 yards. Masoli's back on the field. And Masoli weaves his way for about six yards to the 42-yard line. So Stanley gets some playing time, but Houston Nutt goes back to Masoli. I can honestly tell you I did not see that coming. I thought Nathan Stanley would get to finish the ball game. He may have, may have gotten himself nicked up a little bit on one of those. Uh, he's sitting on the bench over there on the sideline. Under 11 minutes to play. Stay tuned. Georgia Auburn next on CBS. That ball was out. That ball came out of the hands of Jeff Scott. And it's going to be Tennessee football. Oh, the turnovers. 
Yeah, it just when it rains, it pours. I don't know whether Jeff Scott ever got this football. Let's check it out and see. It's got he's got it in there, and it just it's just stripped out. Now there there is a question about whether his knee, his right knee, might have been down before that ball popped out. Well, you, you know, one turnover on the road, you may survive. Four, four, absolutely not. Hard to overcome four turnovers. You get 21 points off those turnovers. <laughs> Hand off pool. Maybe a yard. We go back to New York and once again, Tim. Tim, you know, when I take a look at that scoreboard, I was saying, are you talking basketball? I mean, <laughs> 83 to 20. Ole Miss allowing 45 in this one today. And still just under 10 minutes left to play. Tennessee at the 44-yard line of the Rebels. On a pitch, coming near side. Nice cut. And running hard is cool still down the stretch. There's one, two, three, four, five. Ole Miss Rebels. But one Scott a little slow coming up. The senior from St. Petersburg, Florida. He's down right in front of the Tennessee bench. It does not look like he's going to be getting up here anytime soon. Working on that right leg. My 17-year NFL career and my Notre Dame career. I had 20 surgeries. Uh, the body is not made to play this game. And, uh, and you're still standing. Still standing. Which is amazing to me. Still standing. But there are, there are guys that have had a lot more than me. And, uh, you know, it, it definitely does take its toll. But you, you love the game. Tears in the eyes of Lawan Scott, a senior. Well, how about Tennessee, though? When you, when you look at what's going on here, this is their first SEC win today if this thing holds up. And I don't have any reason to believe it won't. But their first SEC win, and you know, they've had five games against top 20 teams this year. They lost to Oregon, Florida, LSU, Bama, and South Carolina. That's typical of Southeastern Conference stuff, but it's not like they've been losing games they should be winning, you know? They haven't, they haven't won a game in the SEC since 08 when they beat uh, Mississippi State in the West, that is, in the West, 34-3. Under nine minutes, clock runs, third down and one. Tennessee trying to keep this drive alive, shoot the clock, and they do. First down and more on the breakaway. Pool, goodbye. Touchdown, Tennessee. Terran Poole. So Tarrant goes in. He ran one 36. This one goes 35. Ninth rushing touchdown of the season. He's over 100 yards, 107. His sixth 100-yard rushing game this season. That leads the SEC. And the extra point by Lincoln is up and good. And a runaway here in Knoxville. Very, very consistent. Something that gets kind of lost in the shuffle with the misery that Tennessee has been kind of going through this year. Today, boy, the exact opposite. A lot to celebrate. Kick is away. Neat. Wrapped up at the 15. We go back to New York, and here's Tim Brando. Look at the fans. They are waving hellos to Cam Newton. And you'll see it on CBS next. 
I think Tim, we can put that uh, issue to rest that he will play in this ball game. <laughs> the introductions have been made. Ole Miss on the ground. Davis off tackle. Clock runs. Eight and a half to go. 52 14 Tennessee on a second down at six. Now, Jeremiah Masoli, obviously a terrible day today. What can you try to accomplish here? Well, you just keep trying to, to keep your guys in it. You know, a leader is a guy that's going to go out there and no matter what the situation, no matter how bad it's been, he's going to step in the huddle and say, guys, just give it the best you can right now. Let's see if we can get on the board, get some respectability back by not quitting. And see, if Houston not told us exactly that. This guy is a leader. He understands the mistakes of his past. He has tried to right those wrongs. And you know what? Everyone in that huddle, when you ask them straight up, what kind of guy is he? He's a leader, and there is respect among the other 10 in that huddle of Ole Miss. He's under center with third down and three. Masoli runs, late pitch, in trouble. Jeff Scott, nowhere to go. But on second effort, he is close, but short now, the first down. Well, he was caught along that sideline, and he, he's about a yard shy. Well, it looks like Houston Nutt just wants to try and run the clock out here, not even trying to put the ball up in the air. Shaking his head. But even that right there, you saw the indecision in Jeremiah Mazzoli on the pitch. He wasn't quite sure whether to dish it or keep it. And, you know, he got squeezed by that sideline, didn't yeah. have any room once the ball was he pitched. Played the short, they played the short side of the field. They played the short side of the field, which is even more vital for the quarterback to make a Justin quick, decisive Hunter. decision. You know, instead of waiting and stringing it out, that's what the defense wants you to do. They want you to string it out to the sideline. Campbell set to punt, high snap, brings it down, and the punt is away. Tennessee lets the ball roll, and it's out of bounds at the 26-yard line. Timeout, we'll be back to Knoxville after this. Our first look at Matt Sims, who reaches the Tennessee huddle. He's a junior out of Franklin Lakes, New Jersey. Was at Louisville, transferred to El Camino Junior College, then came to Tennessee, recruited by Lane Kiffin. And here's the tough part about that story. Kiffin then left a week later to USC. Right. And uh, Dooley approached Matt Sims at that point and made it clear that he was welcome to stay at Tennessee and be a part of things. He earned the quarterback, starting quarterback position. And it was determined last week, prior to the Memphis game, that... Tyler Bray would be the starting quarterback. And uh, Matt Sims has handled it very well. Doesn't agree with the decision. A lot of people, you know, <laughs> could make a case for Matt Sims, myself included. I'm a fan of his as a quarterback, but the decision was made because uh, Coach Dooley saw some things in Tyler Bray that, 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 that got him very, very excited. And, uh, you know, coaches have to make those tough decisions. It doesn't always work in the favor. Or work the way that, that maybe everybody wants. It never works the way everybody wants. Absolutely. Handle it with class, difficult situation to be involved in. On the ground, David Oku, who gets a couple of carries in this football game. Sims on the season. I mean, you look at his his stats, a 58% completion percentage, nearly 1,500 yards passing, eight touchdowns, five interceptions. I think Derek Dooley. There was a point in time the frustrations of the season also went with Matt Sims with frustrations of key turnovers at key times. No, there's no doubt about it. But now you look at the games that he played against. You know, they played Oregon, Florida, LSU, at Georgia, Alabama, and South Carolina. While this team was really trying to help these young freshmen mature and grow up, and Matt Moore was a quarterback taking the lump while they were going through it. And I think that's that's kind of the argument is that, hey, man, I was back there getting, getting beat up going through those big, tough games. Tomorrow, you can experience the inspirational stories of courageous individuals who join icons like Ali, Ash, and Ripken on the most inspirational hour of sports on television, the Courage in Sports Award. That's tomorrow at 3 Eastern or 5 o'clock. Check your local listings. That brings up fourth and seven for Tennessee, and Cunningham is back out to punt. High snap. Boots it away. Ole Miss wrapped up, driven back, and they'll start at the 30. Now they're going to give him forward progress to the 40, and we'll be back to Knoxville. Timmy B. 
has done a great job keeping us updated on Cam Newton's situation today. He has warmed up. He's been introduced to the crowd. Uh, I believe just short of a standing ovation. Now that, that looked like a, a whatever that was about a, a maxed out ovation. <laughs> they were standing and sitting. They were going nuts. And rightfully so. That, that program has been great through the coals here the last couple weeks. Stanley back at quarterback for Ole Miss. He's on the rollout, steps back up and throws. Oh, what a catch. Yes, complete at the 41-yard line and a beautiful grab by Marquise Summers. Well, Georgia number two, Auburn. Georgia five and five. Auburn perfect season, and they want to keep it that way. They put points on the board. Total yards over 500 a game. But Georgia has been playing some good football lately. Uh, this is not a, a team that... Auburn can afford to take lightly. Mike Rick will have that team ready to play some football. Stacked up 45 yard line. And the clock rolls up four and a half to play. You don't think that those uh, Georgia Bulldogs have talked about what a great deal it would be to, to spoil the party for Auburn, do you? Oh, I think that's been a discussion all week long for and Rick and company. Yeah. I think Dooley's having a a fun time for the first time in a long time on the right. sideline today for Tennessee. Stanley barking out the signals under center. Three step drop goes up top. Wants the deep ball, floats it up and picked. Tennessee with another interception. Anthony Anderson still on his feet and takes a seat at the 25 yard line. Three interceptions tossed by Masoli. And now Stanley gives one up to the Tennessee secondary. Uh, I kind I fault Melvin Harris on that interception right there. That ball was put up in a jump ball situation. Melvin Harris was not wide open, but you see he never goes up for the football. It, it is taken away by a much smaller defensive player in Anthony Anderson. Watch, Melvin Harris never jumps for this ball. And Anthony Anderson says, I want it. If you're, if you're not going to challenge me for it, I'm going to take it. Melvin Harris has got to stop and go up and get that football, use that big body. Well, it's been a frustrating day. That says a lot. Bradley Sowell. Five, five turnovers. Five turnovers. <laughs> Neal is pushed back. And tomorrow on CBS, the kingpin of Lucky Strike Bowling goes undercover. You can't miss an all-new undercover boss. It's tomorrow only on CBS. That's an interesting show as well. As we look at Matt Sims, but so if you're a Houston nut, what do you do now? You got two games left. We talked about it. Got two games to become uh, bowl eligible. You got at LSU and Mississippi State. You got to find a way to keep these guys fighting and believing in it. Tough, tough day today. Nothing went right. No phase of the ball game has gone right for Ole Miss. Some days it's going to be like that. Sims the handoff. I will give Ole Miss this. Defensively, they continue to attack Tennessee. On the defensive side, Steve, you've been on this side too. It's hard to point fingers defensively because your O has given up the ball on big play turnovers, and it's like, hey, is it on us? Not really, but you got to still come together if you want to go bowling. You do. You still do. And, and the offense and Jeremiah Masoli, the, the number one culprit, has not played well today. But there's been some pretty easy touchdown runs for Torn. You know, Torn pool has had two or three easy ones right at the middle for, for 20, 30, 40 yards where he wasn't even touched. So the defense, I think, cannot sit back and feel good about what they did today. They, they can feel good about the effort, for sure. Neal, the ball carrier, freshman from Tyrone, Georgia. That brings up fourth down. Another punt is ahead for Tennessee. Clock hits the two-minute mark. Stay tuned. Georgia, Auburn, next on CBS. First play of the game, Steve, you go back three hours ago, and that first play kind of set the tempo it, it of the did. day. I mean, if, if if that ball is intercepted by John Cornell, which it should have been, if it's intercepted, he may take that back for yeah. a touchdown, and then maybe a route's on the other way. But instead, no, it goes 80 yards for a touchdown, and the route is on to Tennessee. Cunningham the punt. 
and no return as Summers is taken down at the 38-yard line. A minute 19 to play. You look at the comparisons with Masoli and Bray, there really is no comparison. The three touchdowns on the right and the three picks on the left. Right. Correct. And you add uh, another pick in there by uh, Nathan Stanley on that last play. It's, uh, it's hard to win, but, but Jeremiah Masoli, I know, come into this game, he had high hopes. He wanted to play well. He probably convinced the coaches during the course of the week that he was feeling good enough to do it. He was able to go out and function at a high level. You got to admire and respect that because he, he's proven himself to be that kind of guy. But it just, it, he was out of sync from the early, early stages. And, you know, I think, I think uh, Houston Nutt could have justified making a move a lot earlier in the ball game. Stanley hands it off. A couple of yards. Coming up on a minute. Number 29, that's Thomas with the carry. So the first SEC win in the books for Derek Dooley. And it looks like he's finally relaxing a little bit. You see, did you see that little smile cracking uh, his cheeks there a little bit? Barely. You know, in our meetings on Thursday, that's an intense head coach with a big job to do. And next up is Vanderbilt, followed by Kentucky at home. If you win out and you got the first step to do so, you become bowl eligible if you're Tennessee ball. He loves to find a way to take it to that Kentucky game. I guarantee you they're going to Vandy next week. But if he can if he can get it to the point where that last game means bowl eligibility, old Rocky top, top will be shaken. I guarantee that last week of the season. Handshakes on that Tennessee sideline. They got out early, 21 points in the first quarter. And they run away against Ole Miss this afternoon. Final play. In the pile for a first down. And that's it. And a Gatorade bath in Knoxville for Dooley. 52 14 the final for Steve Berline, Craig Bullerjack. We say so long again. 52 to 14 the final. Coming up next, it's an SEC showdown. Georgia taking on Auburn.